The topic of this video is called ridge regression. Ridge regression is an alternative to a standard multiple regression when you have highly correlated predictor variables. When you want to predict y given two or more x variables, but those x's are themselves correlated. Now that phenomenon, if you like, is called multicollinearity, and it can cause a lot of problems in trying to get good estimates of the parameters in the model. Now multiple linear regression gives us what are called minimum variance unbiased estimates of the coefficients. Turns out though that by allowing for a slight bias in the estimated coefficients, you can get more meaningful estimates of the model parameters in many cases. Not only that, but you can also get estimates with lower variability. Now the example we're going to look at is the 93 cars file. There are 93 automobiles in that file. What I'd like to do is try to build a regression model that will predict the miles per gallon in highway driving, given, given two characteristics of the automobiles. First, the size of the engine. Second, the weight of the vehicle in pounds. Now you can probably anticipate that X1 and X2 are going to be quite highly correlated. We have heavy cars with big engines in that data set, light cars with small engines. It can be very difficult, therefore, to separate the effects of engine size and weight and get any sort of meaningful estimates of the coefficients. I've loaded the 93 cars file into the data sheet. And now I'm going to start where I normally do, plotting the data. The best plot here, I think, is going to be a matrix plot. If I go to plot, scatter plots, matrix plot, I can pick the three columns from this file that I'm interested in. The first one is miles per gallon highway, the second is engine size, and the third is weight. I'll press OK and I'll use all the data and here is a plot, a matrix plot showing this data. The way you read this plot incidentally is across the top you see miles per gallon in highway driving plotted versus both engine size and weight. Below the plot of highway miles per gallon versus weight, in the middle right, you see engine size versus weight. You have all pairs of variables plotted against each other. Now, along the top, you can see that miles per gallon in, in highway driving is, as you might expect, quite strongly negatively correlated with both engine size and weight. When engine size goes up, miles per gallon goes down. When weight goes up, miles per gallon goes down. You can also see, though, that engine size and weight in that middle right plot are themselves very strongly correlated. Small cars have small engines. Big cars have big engines. Now let's see what happens if we try to fit some models to this data. I'm going to start with a typical multiple linear regression, which I'm going to access by going to Relate, Multiple Factors, General Linear Models. The dependent variable in this case will be miles per gallon in highway driving. Then we'll have two quantitative factors, engine size and weight. On the next dialog box, I need to specify the model. I'm using a simple linear regression model with just engine size and weight, so I'll go ahead and take the defaults. When I have a choice of tables and graphs, I'll ask for an analysis summary, the model coefficients, and also a surface plot. Now here's the surface plot, which is showing the fitted model. The height of the surface represents the miles per gallon in highway driving, it's plotted versus engine size and weight. Now, it's more interesting if you go to pane options and ask to show the points. Now a vertical line will be drawn from each point down to the surface. And as I scroll, I can see that the plane does do a pretty good job of going through the points. Although, truthfully, if I get up high, I can see that the points are not very well conditioned to fit anything over this rectangular region. They lie pretty much along a line, 
so the estimated plane is going to be fairly unstable. To see the fitted model, I'll go back to the table of estimated coefficients. There's the fitted model in the section displayed by the stat advisor. It shows miles per gallon in highway driving being equal to about 53.6 miles per gallon plus 1.05 times engine size minus 0.0089 times weight. Now, I'm not surprised by the negative coefficient on weight. I expected miles per gallon to go down as the cars got heavier. What I am surprised about is the positive coefficient on engine size. That seems to imply that the larger the engine, everything else being constant, the higher the miles per gallon. Well, something's wrong here, and what's wrong here is the high correlation between the estimated coefficients is giving me unreliable estimates of the coefficients. To fix this problem, we're going to do a ridge regression. You'll find ridge regression on the Relate menu under Multiple Factors, right above the General Linear Models procedure. To run it, I'll put in miles per gallon in highway driving again as the dependent variable, and I'll put engine size and weight in as the independent variables. Now, the Ridge Regression Analysis Options dialog box will ask me for a value of the Ridge parameter. The Ridge parameter is a value which, if set to zero, gives you ordinary least squares. But if increased in a positive direction away from zero, will add a little bias uh, to those estimates. At the same time, the variability of the coefficients often comes down as that ridge parameter is increased. There's a typical trade-off here between bias and variability. Now I need to specify the range over which to vary the ridge parameter. I'll try 0.0, .0 to 0 0.5 and I'll show you how we're going to find the best value. When the Tables and Graphs button comes up, take all the defaults. The first thing I want to look at is the ridge trace in the upper right corner. What the ridge trace shows you is how the values of the standardized regression coefficients will change as you increase that ridge parameter. In this case, if you look at the top line, you'll notice that the coefficient on engine size which starts out at a positive 0.2, quickly becomes negative as I increase the ridge parameter. At the same time, there's a corresponding compensation in the coefficient on weight, uh, moving toward that horizontal uh, line at zero. And by the time they get to 0 0.5, both estimates are solidly negative. Now one of the tricks in a ridge regression is to decide when you've added enough bias. A good way to do that is to go to the second plot that I created. That's called the Variance Inflation Factors plot. It shows how the variability of the estimated coefficients has been inflated. If you look back where the ridge parameter is zero, that's ordinary least squares, you see a variance inflation factor of about 3.5. But as we increase the ridge parameter, that variance inflation factor falls quickly. One way to pick a single value for the ridge parameter is to push the right mouse button and go to locate. That'll bring up a set of crosshair cursors, and I can now position those cursors close to where the variance inflation factor falls below 1. In this case, it looks like a ridge parameter of about 0.164 would be a good one. I can now press the right mouse button, go to Analysis Options, set that value for the ridge parameter, and it will fit my model. You can see the model if we go back to the analysis summary, here are the estimates of the coefficients on engine size, which is now minus 
0.357 and weight minus 0 0.0058. The fitted regression model from the ridge analysis, the ridge regression is shown by the stat advisor. And the coefficients definitely do appear to make more sense.